into another 15 minutes of tangling. So yesterday we finished up this triangular well pattern and today we're going to continue on with well but we're going to do a different modification. We're going to do that right here on this side. So I'm going to flip around. And this grid pattern does start with a square grid this time. So similar to how we made squares when we were completing our fragment, uh, the Renaissance fragment, we're going to do the same with our well pattern. So I'm actually going to start from the corner here and as it turns, create um, some square-ish shapes, at least relatively uh, quadrilateral. <laughs> this one will go behind. This one will partially go behind. We'll have I'll continue the pattern here. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna say those are our quadrilateral squarish shapes. And inside each one, we're going to draw an orb. And similar to how we did well in the triangular um, grid, we're going to go ahead and do the same here where we take off and land from the orb to one of the corners. And I'm going to start by going counterclockwise. That one's going to be a little strange just because it has a bit of a wonky shape. So we were counterclockwise here. So that means here we're going to be clockwise. You can tell it, we did it properly when these two connect and these two seem to connect here. This one will go behind. So let's see, counterclockwise, clockwise. This one would be counterclockwise. So here we'll go clockwise again. I don't like the pushing it forward, so I'm gonna start from the vertex. There we go. That feels better in my hand. Okay. And this will be counterclockwise. Last night it poured and poured and poured. There was even a flash Blood warning out. It continued raining throughout the morning, but has finally cleared up enough for me to be outside. I'm in a courtyard area that has a few different tables, and in the corners, it has these beautiful magnolia trees that are either just now beginning to bloom or they're just about to bloom over the next few weeks. All right, hold on. So here we're counterclockwise. So let's make this one clockwise. Mm
there are quite a few birds, particularly morning doves and robins flying around. All right, so we've got our pattern. We're gonna leave it just like this and start embellishing this pattern itself. So for each of these like fan shapes, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some extra lines in those fan shapes. Every once in a while, someone's walking through the courtyard. There's, there are covered walkways on each side of the courtyard. So I hear people coming in and out of the building and into the walkways. Let's go for this one here. Earlier, there was a dad with his daughter playing out in the courtyard. He was telling me, you know, with all the playgrounds closed, they've had to get creative. But um, I'm on UVA grounds, and he was saying, you know, UVA is like a, a playground in and of itself. So it seems like folks are, are trying to find alternative ways of meeting their outdoor needs. Go to that other side all the way over here. All right, and one more. So now I'm going to think about how I want to color these in. Do I want to color them in black? Do I want to color them in brown? And then whatever color I choose to color these stripes in, I'm going to use the opposite color to put hatching in um, in the background. The other choice is to sort of alternate, like color these in brown, color these in black. I think I would like to color them in brown and then put the hatching in the background as black. So let's start. I'm going to start right over here. With my inking in using brown. I didn't really think much about how many of these lines I was drawing into the fan shape. I just sort of let it happen organically. So each one might look a little different and that's perfectly fine with me. I once had a friend, she was looking at one of my artworks and she said, how do you get it all so perfect? And I said, I, I just, I don't <laughs> at all. 
I'm just really good at tricking your eye into thinking that it's perfect. There are so many details on that page, it, your eye can't possibly take them all in at once. So it tricks you into thinking that it's all perfect. And I said, here, look closer. Um, and I had done henna drum and the little um, like flower shapes in henna drum. And, sh and initially she was like, all of your leaves are, and petal shapes are just perfect. They're exactly the same. And I said, let's look closer. And then she realized each one was completely different. And I said, yeah, I'm just really good at putting in so many details that your eye sort of gets tricked into believing that everything is uniform and everything is perfect. It's like when you're looking at a mosaic, you know, is each little tile absolutely completely quote unquote perfect? Usually not, but the overall composition is absolutely perfect in its imperfection. So I'm, I guess that's why I'm not terribly concerned with what most folks would consider mistakes. Um, and I think after you've practiced Zentangle drawing for quite some time, you start to become friendly with with error. I would also attribute that to um, my time as a Montessori teacher. Error is definitely a source of, of learning rather than something to be fussed about. Learning and I would also say creativity. Yeah, it, it gives you the opportunity to think a bit more creatively, dig a little bit deeper. Mm, I really like these moments of quiet stillness. I guess that's one of the nice things about it having been so rainy is not so many people are out. So there's a lot more of critters and nature out. All right, we've got our, our browns put in. Let's go ahead and add our um, black hatching in the background. And then we might be able to get going on some, some highlighting and, and shading. So I don't know, I like starting on this edge over here. So I'm going to totally do that. So just adding hatching lines in the background. I was thinking the other day as I was looking at this about, well, what if I inked in the background rather than putting hatching? It would definitely create more contrast. So I think towards the end, when I start making some observations and decisions about the composition as a whole, I might go in and ink some spaces in. But for right now, I'm perfectly happy to add in some hatching instead. I think that in the end, there will be plenty of detail, plenty of contrast. I may not need the extra contrast added by inking in the backgrounds, but we'll see. That'll be a decision for later. Always remembering to breathe. Every once in a while, do a body scan and relax, especially the hand. 
can you really give some thought how how tight really do you need to hold that pen how hard really do you need to press down on your pen when you're drawing <clears throat> It all depends. Some days I draw pretty straight. Some days my hand goes all over the place. I just sort of accept it. It's the way I am that day. And usually it's not terribly noticeable in the drawing because if it's, at least if it's consistent, it looks as if it's meant to be that way. I like that we can take the same pattern of well and just modify it slightly and it looks like a completely new idea. We're actually going to pause there because that's our 15 minutes of tangling for today. So tomorrow we'll finish up drawing well, we'll finish up with the highlighting and shading and then maybe move on to a new pattern. Thank you so much for joining me for another day of Zen Tangling. I'm really excited to see how this project is turning out, and I hope to see, um, if you guys are following along, what your projects are looking like. Um, I hope you have a spectacular rest of your day, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you.